be sure to subscribe if you love scary stories and for a chance to win one of five $20 Amazon gift cards on January 31st. So you're going on a bit of a vacation to a cabin soon. You might as well serve yourself up on a silver platter. This world is a strange one. Whether you own your own cabin or you're planning on renting one for a weekend getaway, it might be the worst choice of your life. Sure, it's peaceful out there in the midst of nature away from the human pack, but we are drawn to the pack for a reason, safety. So when you give up your brick walls for thin wooden ones away from society, you might think it's relaxing, but you might just be in danger. Evil lives in the shadows and creatures of the wilderness are ravenous. So that being said, enjoy these five allegedly true cabin in the woods scary stories. But first, if you've ever seen the Mothman or you've encountered the Goatman, I would love to read your story. Just send it over at darknessprevails.org. Thanks. Now, it's about time we got going to that cabin in the woods. Number one, The Watcher in the Woods. Submitted by Lisa R. This encounter took place in 2010. My boyfriend and I were in our mid-twenties. It was summertime. We were lucky enough to get time off work at the same time, so we decided to spend a couple of nights at my family cabin. This cabin is located in northwestern Ontario, Canada. It's in a remote area about 40 minutes away from the nearest town. It's near a mid-sized lake surrounded by dense forest. There are only 20 cabins on that lake, spread out quite far from one another. We were there in the middle of the week, so there really weren't that many other people on the lake. I should mention that this cabin is on an island. Our plan was to get there Tuesday night and we'd be leaving by Thursday morning. We arrived and spent the first night without incident. On Wednesday, we took the canoe out for a short ride. Then we parked it on the mainland and went on a hike down an old logging road. The road hasn't been driven down in years. It's overgrown and as far as I knew, people only used it for blueberry picking nowadays. But it goes into the bush for quite a few kilometers. The two of us hiked down this road for about two hours. Soon we sat down for a small lunch, then decided to turn back. On our way back, I could not shake the heavy feeling that we were being watched and followed. It only occurred to me then that if anything bad were to happen to us, no one was coming to help. In hindsight, we should have told someone about our hiking plans, considering we went two hours in, just in case, but it was too late for that. I tried my best to dismiss how I felt, and I didn't mention it to my boyfriend. We found the canoe where we had left it tied up. We got in and began paddling home. I was in the back of the canoe, steering. I couldn't help but turn around and look behind us. And the very first time I did so, I saw a large shadow move among the trees. It was a short distance from where we had parked the canoe. When I looked back a second time, I saw nothing. So I quickly dismissed what I saw originally. I reminded myself that your eyes can play tricks on you very easily when you're looking into the shadows of a densely packed forest, especially when you're already scared. We got back to the cabin, we had some dinner, and we played some cards and just hung out. At around midnight, we decided to head down to the dock to do some stargazing. We're lucky enough to see the northern lights all year round. We were sitting on the dock. It was peaceful, we were just looking up at the stars and we started to kiss. About 30 seconds later, just behind us, there was a loud crash back in the bush. It sounded like there was a big animal moving around, breaking branches and twigs about 60 feet away. Whatever it was, it was huge. We both instantly turned around and my boyfriend asked, what is that? I have no idea, I said. We don't get animals that big on this island. And just then, whatever this creature was, it started to grunt and stomp its feet all over the ground. My boyfriend muttered, what the heck? I, I don't know, I replied. It was so dark outside that we couldn't see a thing in the direction of the sounds. Neither of us had bothered to bring a flashlight as it was easy enough for us to walk back up the path by following the kitchen light we'd left on. We both stood up slowly 
and once we were up, we ran back up to the cabin. Back inside, we closed everything except for the kitchen window. We sat there in silence and listened. Nothing. We heard nothing outside. We tried to look out the windows, but it was simply pitch black. We tried to discuss what it could have been, tried to figure out what it was. We decided that the only two animals remotely that big in the area are moose, which are extremely rare and have never been seen on that island before, and black bears. I explained to my boyfriend that bears rarely swim out to the island from the mainland, and we hadn't had one on our property in years. Besides, I joked, since when do black bears interrupt people having romantic moments in the moonlight by crashing through the brush and stomping their feet? My boyfriend didn't think it was so funny. Eventually, we calmed down and we went to bed. There are two single beds in the back room. One of the beds is situated right under the bedroom window. The pillow sits about two inches below the window sill. This is the bed I always sleep in. I enjoy keeping the window open. It lets the fresh forest air in and I like the sounds of the night. That night though, I kept the window closed tight and I pulled the blinds shut. We were lying in our beds talking when all of a sudden, this awful smell enveloped the entire room. I'd never smelled anything like that before. It was a putrid combination of wet dog, body odor, and rotting garbage. I will never forget that smell. I must have made a disgusted noise because my boyfriend asked what was wrong. I told him to come over to my bed and smell this horrible smell coming through the window. And sure enough, he smelled the same thing. Again, we had no idea what it was, and neither of us wanted to open the blinds to investigate. The smell disappeared as quickly as it had come, and a short time later, we were able to fall asleep. The next morning, we thoroughly checked around the cabin and docked for signs of a bear. We found nothing. We then ate a quick breakfast and left the cabin for home. It honestly didn't occur to me until weeks later what the creature could have been. Perhaps it was a Sasquatch. Although not as prevalent as on the west coast of North America, there is a long history of Bigfoot sightings in the woods of Northwest Ontario. I did a bit of research and discovered that Sasquatch has been known to display ape-like behavior, such as throwing rocks and stomping their feet around. People that have close encounters with Bigfoot often report the creature having a very strong odor. In addition, Bigfoot are widely believed to be very strong swimmers, so it would have been no problem to follow us back to the cabin by swimming and island hopping. Now, as an avid camper, hiker, and lifelong cottager who has seen many bears over the years, I don't believe for one second that that thing was a bear. Over the 50 plus years my family has owned the place, every bear has left obvious evidence behind. Evidence such as piles of excrement, claw marks on the windowsills and walls of the cabin, ripped up patio and window screens, or tipped over garbage cans and barbecue. Bears create a lot of noise and can be very destructive, but the creature we encountered was quiet and sneaky when it wanted to be, too clever for a bear. The creature must have followed us back home from our hike down the logging road, and to think it could have been only inches away from my head, listening and sniffing me through the thin pane of glass. These thoughts give me chills to this day. My boyfriend never believed my Bigfoot theory, but he still admits that he doubts it was a bear. If not a bear, then what was it? I'll never go down that logging road again, and next time I feel like something is following me through the woods, I'll trust my instincts and run. Number two, the stalker in the woods. Submitted by Anonymous. This happened to me only a few months ago. I was 13 and my friend had just invited me along with three other friends on a fun fishing trip. His mother picked us up after school and we drove to my friend's cabin by the lake. The cabin itself was about an hour's drive away and that was about a half a mile away from the lake. We got there around 4.30 in the afternoon and we set up everything. We got the canoe ready to go fishing and we got a fire ready to burn. Everything was normal until we had dinner. My friend's parents brought some burgers to cook on the fire, and after that we made s'mores. 
but I kept hearing noises coming from behind me in the woods. There was a lot of snapping twigs, and I tried to shake it off as a deer, since where we lived is known for having a great population of them. We were about three quarters of a mile from the nearest other living soul, or at least we thought. Around seven that night, we were packing up, and my friend announced that he needed to go to the bathroom. So we walked about a half mile to the cabin, but there's an intersection leading to the road where the car was parked, and one of my friends said they were going to wait back at the car. So while she walked to the car, the four of us and my friend's parent walked to the cabin. When we got there, my friend and his mother went inside. The rest of us just waited outside on a tire swing. We each took turns at being pushed. I was sitting on a log staring off into space when I heard the familiar noise of more snapping twigs. I looked behind my friend on the tire swing. I looked into the woods 50 feet away from us. It was getting very dark, and since it's almost winter, it was very hard to see. I could barely make out the outline of a figure as I stared into the woods. Then the figure seemed to see me, and it ran away, and I could hear the snapping twigs too. I immediately told my friends what I saw. They didn't believe me. Then when my other friend and his mom came out of the cabin, I told them as well, and they said I'd been watching too many scary videos online. Maybe I was just too paranoid, I thought. So I walked into the woods where I had seen it. And sure enough, there were very obvious and fresh footprints there, crushed leaves and soil and snapped twigs. Creeped out, I walked out of the woods and I told my friends that I still think I saw something, even if they don't believe me. We started walking back to the car and we heard the most blood curdling scream I'd ever heard. It was our friend who decided to walk back to the car, alone. We ran back up the trail to the car, and we found our friend sitting in the car with the doors all locked. But the windows were rolled down just enough for a man wearing a black suit to fit his hand through. This man, dressed in all black, was taller than all of us. He must have been about six foot five. In his hand, he was holding something, and I couldn't make out what it was. When this guy saw us, he jumped into a red pickup truck that wasn't there when we arrived, and he floored it out of there. We asked our friend what had happened. Through tears, she said she was sitting there listening to music on her iPhone, when suddenly a man's hand was trying to fit through the window, trying to grab her. She screamed, and then the man pulled out a knife, and luckily, that's when we came. She was still choking up, but I could tell she was saying that she would have been killed if we hadn't come at the right time. It turned out that one of my friend's parents was holding a shotgun, and that's why the man didn't try to fight us. The parents called the police, and we all got in the car and sped home. When we were dropped off, she told my parents what happened, and luckily no one was injured. I still hang out with all four of those friends. We were planning on going to the cabin again later that year, but we decided that a sleepover would be better. Who would want to go back to where a traumatizing event took place, where they almost died? Number three, The Cabin. Submitted by Thomas. Four years ago, my friend invited me to stay at their cabin in Tahoe. I didn't really know them very well, so I asked if I could bring my best friend Mark along. It wasn't a very long road trip. It was something like three hours, so it wasn't that bad. The cabin was this old four-story place, including basement and loft, of course, with another smaller cabin in the backyard, which had two stories. When you stand in front of the cabin, you walk up a long flight of stairs, and in front of you, you will see a door. To the left is another staircase that goes to a sliding door, and to the right is the path to the backyard. Once you go through the door, to your left is a door to the basement, and in front of you are stairs that curve to the left and up to the second story. There to your left is a bedroom, and to your right is the hot tub, laundry room, water heater, and in front of you is another flight of stairs that goes up and to the left. When you get up there, it's a living room, and to the left is the kitchen. Halfway to the kitchen and to the left is the stairs to the loft. That's where we kids slept. The day after we arrived, before breakfast, everyone decided to go to the other cabin, we hung out and after breakfast, Mark and I finished early, washed our plates and grabbed the keys for the second cabin. We went up and waited for everyone else to finish. We walked up the stairs and Mark unlocked the door and we walked in. 
Once we got on the floor, we noticed that the window to the left was open. Mark went and shut it, and we went onto the balcony straight across from the window. Now, we closed the door behind us, and we just sat there for about 15 minutes, hanging out and talking. When we got bored and realized that they weren't coming, we turned around and tried the door. It was locked from the inside. Now, we thought this was a self-locking door or something, so we thought we were idiots for closing it. So it was just us, locked out. We freaked out, and we forgot about the keys in Mark's pocket. Then there was the sudden realization of the keys, and Mark took them out and unlocked the door. But as soon as we opened it, the window from before that was open when we walked in, the one that we had shut, it was now open again. Slowly, I closed the window, and we headed for the other cabin. Four steps down from the outside stairs, we realized we left the door open. Well, I left the door open, so I went to go close the door, and once I was up there, I heard it. There were footsteps on the upper level. I ran back to Mark, trying to get down the stairs, telling him that someone is in the cabin. Those four words made us run so fast, faster than our little legs could go. When we got back to the bigger cabin, we told everyone what happened. We all decided to go back, but we brought knives and the biggest sticks we could find. I yelled into the still open door, if anyone's in there, come out, we have weapons. No answer. We ran into the cabin and did a complete sweep of the first floor and found nobody. Adrenaline pumping, I led everybody up the stairs, but again, we found nothing, just an open window. That night, we all kept that in the back of our minds, thinking about it occasionally. Right before dinner, we made up this game where we would put freaking sheets over our heads, hide and scare the ghost hunters who were coming down to the second story bedroom. They had to find the ghost without getting caught. It was my turn to be the ghost, so I went down to find a hiding spot. And that's when I saw it. It was floating or gliding past a window. No person could reach that unless they were 20 feet tall. Its face was pale white it went in front of the window, just minding its own business. My heart sank. Immediately, I ran up the stairs to the living room when a pillow thrown by one of the other kids hit the chandelier and we had to end the game early. After dinner and getting ready for bed, I told Mark what I saw. He believed me and because the others wouldn't believe us, we decided not to tell anybody. But that night, I woke up at three in the morning and little did I know that Mark did too because we both saw something going up the stairs to the loft. It seemed to be a shadow. I don't know how else to describe it. It was blacker than black, like a solid black mass, just walking up the stairs. That morning, I told Mark about the incident, and what he said made me feel less crazy. He said, yeah, it was like three in the morning. I heard someone walking up the stairs. Then I just fell back asleep thinking it was one of you guys. And thankfully, that was the day we left. Now, I only went there one more time after these incidents, and I never had an experience like those again. Number four, Cabin in the Woods. Submitted by S. James N. This happened about two years ago. I was 12 at the time. It was just me and my grandpa. We were staying out at a cabin in the woods. A couple of times every year, we'd go to this cabin to camp out for about a week. This happened on our second to last day of our little camp out. I had gone out to collect some water from a well. I was walking back and I looked up the hill to see a man standing there. He was kind of far away. All I could really make out was his shadow. As I looked up at him, he started to move. I was used to seeing people but they were always hunters, wearing bright orange clothing or camouflage, but this man was wearing dark clothing. He left my line of sight as I walked away. When I got back, I asked my grandpa about the man. He said that I shouldn't worry, that it was probably just someone hiking through the woods. But I saw the same man one more time that day. He was down by the creek, just standing there. I ran back to camp as I was too scared to do anything. I have insomnia, so it's sometimes hard for me to go to sleep. It was nighttime and my grandpa was sleeping. But I lay awake on the couch downstairs playing games on my phone. So as it often went, I couldn't sleep that night. 
I was facing a window and saw movement out of the corner of my eye. I looked up and there was nothing there. So I went back to my phone and I got on YouTube. As I was watching videos, I heard a knock on the door to the cabin. It was slow and quiet. I quickly shut off my phone and sat there in silence. This time it came again, only louder. I ran up the stairs as fast as I could to my grandpa's bed. I shook him awake while begging for this to end. I told him as fast as I could what had just happened. He grabbed his handgun that was next to his bed and he turned on the light. My grandpa wasn't very old and he was fast. He told me to calm down and to stay upstairs. He slowly walked down the stairs with the flashlight in hand. I tiptoed to the top of the stairs and sat down. Then I heard a gunshot ring out. Then my grandpa screamed up at me to come downstairs and to follow him. As soon as he saw me, he grabbed my hand and pulled me outside. He told me to get into his truck as fast as possible and lock the doors. It was pitch black and all I could see was the light from my grandpa's flashlight outside the car. My grandpa ran towards the truck and I unlocked the doors so he could jump in. He started up the truck and started driving down the path towards the road. The truck stopped and I looked in front of us and there was the man. He was limping down the road with a large hunting knife in his hand. Number five, The Lake's Secret, submitted by Riley W. It's important to note that this isn't my first strange encounter, but the worst. My name is Riley and I live in Australia. I'm 16 years old. My family and I have always enjoyed water skiing as long as I can remember. Burrenjuk Dam, practically a lake, was always a family favorite spot. During the summer holidays, we would pack our bags, equipment, and we would be on our way. The drive was boring as heck, but once we made it, it would be far from boring. When we arrived, it was dark, and we had to go through gates to get in. We asked the receptionist for keys to the cabin. While the rest of my family went to get the keys, I stayed in the car. There was only a minute left on the video I was watching on my phone. When it was finished, I looked out the window to see my surroundings. Though I couldn't see much, I could make out a few ferns and trees. Everything you'd expect, but something didn't seem right. A strong feeling of fear washed over me. No matter how hard I looked, I couldn't find what was causing me so much panic. But eventually, I saw two red dots reflecting in the glass. I decided to turn around and look out the other window, but I wasn't ready for what I saw. The image is still burned into my mind. Its face was as pale as the moon, yet its eyes were red like neon. It had two different lower jaw bones on each side, like its jaw had been split in half. Its fur was falling out in patches, and what fur it did have was matted and dirty. The whole of its body was extremely disproportionate, and it was twitching crazily. Yet the moment I blinked, the thing was gone. The moment my family got back, I told them what I saw but they looked at me confused. For one, they knew I never really got scared. I didn't get much sleep that night, but what sleep I did get, I kept seeing it outside my window and it seemed so real. I woke up, but not dramatically like you see in the movies, but I was very much soaked in sweat. And that's when I noticed that it was really outside my window. I noticed how tall it was, at least three meters, I rushed to my brother to wake him up to show him the proof before it was gone. But the moment my brother walked into the room and looked out the window, the thing had disappeared again. My brother simply shook his head and he left. The next day, I thought a quick kneeboard session in the water would clear my mind. My mother was the one watching me. She always had an eagle eye and would spot the smallest things. So I felt safe with her watching me. It was surprisingly busy on the water with different colored and styled boats all over the place. We went past the island in the middle of the lake and things started to get bumpy really fast. Eventually I fell off and I raised my hand for them to spot me in the water and to turn the boat around. But when I looked, there was no boat. They wouldn't have just left me there, I thought, but there was no sign of a boat anywhere. Even though seconds before, there were many all over the place. I yelled for what must have been 10 minutes Still, 
no one came. I swam to the island in the middle. It was closer than the shore. No matter how much I swam though, it didn't look like I was getting any closer, which scared and confused me. What was going on? There had just been so much weird things going on like it was a bad dream. Then I remember waking up on the shore around late afternoon. Why though? Why was I there? I thought I was in my bed. And that was when I realized that I was wearing my boxer shorts because it was really hot that night. It apparently was a dream, a bad dream, going out onto the lake and falling, everyone disappearing. But how the hell did I get to the shore? Had I slept walk from my bed? I even had some light marks on my chest. I was walking barefoot back to where I thought the cabin was and the rocks butchered my feet. Soon I had to rest as my feet were aching and stinging. So I sat on a rock by the shore. I heard something and I looked in the direction of the noise and I saw that thing again. This time it was by the water. Every instinct told me not to. I called out to it. I looked into the thing's red eyes. It didn't move, but fear filled me so fast that I ran anyway. With my feet basically destroyed, it hurt so much to run. I hid behind a tree so that it wouldn't see me. I could hear large branches breaking behind me. It sounded so loud like thunder. I peered around the corner and I saw it move from tree to tree. It then stopped. It then went in between some tall shrubs and ferns near a hill. My curiosity was way too strong and stupidly I followed. Feet shredded to hell. I was still a very curious teenager. I had never heard or seen anything like this creature before. I had to know more about it. I lost sight of it pretty fast, so I followed what I thought was a trail as best as I could. I ended up finding what seemed to be its den. There were bones of many different animals in there. The thing wasn't there, so I cautiously looked around, but it was very dark and I couldn't see much. It took a while for my eyes to adjust, but soon I could make out things all over the ground. Things like a couple of phones, a wallet, someone's pill bottle, and even pillows. I reached for the nearest phone. If anything, if it did work, I could use its flashlight. And luckily for me, there wasn't a password on it. I swiped to unlock the phone, and the moment I did, a noise echoed throughout the din. Whosever phone this was, they had left the music on when they locked it, and it automatically began to play when I swiped. The sound of it echoed around me at full volume. Panicked, I was trying to stop the music, but then I heard the footsteps behind me. I slowly turned around, and I could see that thing at the entrance searching very carefully. Then a weird noise came from the thing. It sounded like a clicking noise that came from its jaw, and from its throat bellowed a low moan. It sounded like a dog crying and metal grinding. I lowered myself to the ground slowly, it took everything I had not to scream. I watched as the thing approached me steadily. Every inch it got closer to me. I felt like I was in hell. Suddenly, a light appeared at the entrance of the den, and the creature vanished just like before. And as it went, it felt like a weight had been lifted off of me. I could finally move and stand up. I ran as fast as I could, and I found the man holding the flashlight. He asked me what was wrong and why I was up so late at night. It must have been weird to see some kid running out of a cave in his boxers at night. I told him what had happened and what I'd been experiencing, and he took me back to my cabin. Once there, he explained to me that I was not the first person to say things like that, but he warned me not to tell anyone, especially the police or the rangers. The man made sure I got to the door and then he took off. My parents were up for me waiting. They asked where I'd been, that they were worried sick, I told them that I was going outside to go to the bathroom, but I had lost my way. They didn't really buy it, but they didn't pry anymore. They tended to my cuts and scrapes, and we ended up going home early the next day. When we finally got back home, I felt safe because we were hours and hours away from there. But that night, my brother came into my room, and he said, Riley, there's something out of my window. And when we walked into his room, there was nothing there but I still get chills wondering if that thing may have followed us home. I don't know what happened when I was asleep or how I woke up on the shore away from my cabin, but I do know one thing. That was the most horrifying experience of my life. Curiosity can be a demon itself, 
and just like a demon, it can possess you into doing very bad things. My curiosity could have gotten me killed. I've always wished I had the money to buy tens of thousands of cameras all connected to one server wirelessly. I'd place them in the woods where strange sightings have occurred recently. They would cover every square inch of the forest in their line of sight, leaving nothing unseen. If something was out there, I would see it. Even if I had to hire people to watch the countless hours of footage, we would find evidence of something. But for now, people will continue to be lost, or may I say taken in the woods by someone or something. And any of us could be next. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to send me your Goatman and Mothman sightings at darknessprevails.org. Thanks.